Hello, Adam Bazalgette, two-time PGA Teacher of the Year Award winner, founder of Scratch Golf Academy. Today, how to get that easy swing with effortless power. Everybody wants that. So how to get that easy swing with effortless power. Is this possible? Yes, it absolutely is possible. At the beginning of the video, I'm gonna show you some barriers to that, and at the end, a couple of drills that'll help you achieve what you're looking for. If you like the video, please subscribe to the YouTube channel. Plenty of free content, hopefully more coming your way. And of course, scratchgolfacademy.com is my home website, and we have full courses in every aspect of the game there. Let's get started. Okay, so let's not kid ourselves here. If we're gonna have power, we have to have speed. So we're not talking swinging slowly. That isn't gonna make the ball go a long way, but it, the great golfers, the ones that we admire doing this, they have a certain effortless look, an economy of effort, if you like, while still turning that into the creation of a lot of clubhead speed. Now, nobody could dial up long drives more on cue than Jack Nicklaus. I got to talk to Scott Hoke once. You may remember him. He lost the playoff to Nick Fowler at Augusta. Somehow the subject of Jack Nicklaus's driving came up. Probably I brought it up. It's been a while now. But anyway, he said he'd played with Jack Nicklaus on his rookie year on tour in about 1974 or five or something like that it was. And he said, Jack out hit me by 15 or so yards all the way around, except the four par fives, he out hit me by like 35 to 40 yards on those four holes. And he said, for the life of me, it looked like the same swing as on the other holes. So that's the ability to dial up effortless power. And I've read a couple of times where Jack Nicklaus said two of his biggest keys to create extra power, talking about the driver in this case, were to finish his backswing, make it a little bit longer. And here's the other one, relax the shoulders, get soft and relax. So we're going to get into that a little bit as we go. Let's have a quick look at two players who make this look as easy as it could be and hit the ball prodigious distances then we'll jump back out and we'll get cracking. So Freddie Couples banging another drive out there. Nobody makes it look easier than Fred. Now just watch. Pretty soft up at the top. Watch how he completes that swing and watch the change of direction here. Just watch how beautifully he's patient with the arms and shoulders. No rush at all and that just keeps that power stored until the last possible minute where he can really kick it into gear right down there. Another great example of sequence like that, John Daly. I believe that's here in Naples at the Senior Tour event. And again, watch the leisurely, relaxed look with John. Watch how the club's in no rush coming down, even though he's well into unwinding his lower body. And when you store that, you are going to really crush it at the bottom. So nice oily flowing motion, nothing rushed, leaving the club back there so it can store up some speed. You could sort of see the Jack Nicklaus soft shoulder look there with those guys. What's the number one barrier to that? I teach golf full time still. I'm with people all the time, watching them, grabbing the club, helping them and stuff. I'm telling you, it's the instinct to hit. When you take that golf club and you fire it and try to speed it up at the golf ball, you do the precise opposite of what you should be doing. You tighten up, it feels like you're gonna hit it a long way, and you move that segment prematurely and you don't get the kind of load that you need. Picture a nice, soft, warm towel, how you could snap that. You stick this thing in the freezer for three hours and bring it out and see how much speed you could create. Not that much. What's the second biggest barrier I see to speed? Let's have a look close up. So grip pressure, very, very important. Now listen, you've got to have some grip pressure. You've got to control that golf club a little bit. And it's my belief, by the way, a belief shared with a lot of people, that your grip pressure will slightly build through impact. Your mind senses, when that club picks up to 90 or 100 miles an hour or something like that, hey, you have gotta have some control over that thing. So nothing jerky, nothing grabbing the club, but it'll pick up a little bit of firmness. The key though, can you have control of the club? I don't believe anybody under any normal conditions could get that club away from me. Can you have control over the club, but still have mobility in your wrists and forearms a little bit? Picture shaking hands with someone. Have you ever stuck your hand out and given a reasonably firm handshake? You don't have to have your arm rigid to have a firm handshake. You can have a firm handshake and still shake your arm like that. So that's what you need to practice. Enough grip pressure that you feel like, hey, I've got control of the club, but at the same token, I have some mobility in my wrists and arms. That is a big, big key. Okay, so we've looked a little bit at some of the barriers to speed. Now let's, let's talk a little bit about how you can work on creating this effortless speed. So make a practice swing, get some kind of a wood. You can do this at home or out in the backyard if you don't have room in the house. 
and you'll kind of hear the swish of the club head down there and you can really hear the difference between a lot of speed and not so much speed and the fact of the matter is when you're practicing this you've got to pay attention to your body a little bit pick something out is it grip pressure maybe grip pressure combined with mobility don't so much tell yourself what to do get out of your head and feel what's going on out there and try a few things out try it ultra loose well that may feel like you can create some speed but you wouldn't have sufficient control to play. So firm it up just a little bit. That felt about right to me. I could hear some pretty good speed. Practice really dialing it up for max speed. Back off a little bit. See where you are, where you can still keep your balance, feel like you have control, but you've got it dialed up to about as much as you reasonably can manage. And just take your temperature and keep working on it till you're creating a lot of loud swishes with the club and you're able to stay in balance, etc. Remember one other little thing here, very important, this whole notion about accelerate through the ball, I don't think it's that helpful. Where do we want the most speed? We don't want it over here two feet past the ball, we want it where the golf ball is. So when you hear that club, you want to hear it swishing right down there. And if the energy is going to get out to that golf club at the right moment, remember your body and your arms in sequence are going to have to begin to decelerate a little bit pre that so that the energy has transferred to the club at the right moment. Don't make the mistake of ripping your body through and not letting the club build up speed. So make some fast practice swings, check them out, make sure you're in balance, get the right temperature setting and get some whoosh right where the ball is. Trick is now, can you do it when the golf ball's there? Let's have a look at a drill from here. So there it is, there's the mortal enemy to effortless speed, that little white piece of plastic down there in front of me. Listen, it happens to me, I don't, don't think I've got this problem solved. Stare at that thing and want to hit at it, all of a sudden your effortless power is gone. So how are you going to get that practice swing drill over here to hitting the ball? I've got it on a low tee, I think that makes it easier for most people, they can relax a little more contact isn't such a burden and they can think about what they're doing. The key in these things, believe me, when you can do the practice swing well, when you can get the swish in the practice swing is comparison. How does the practice swing compare with the real swing? So stop thinking about what to do for a second. You're not going to forget about what to do. Get a couple of practice swings the way you like them and start to compare. When I go to hit that ball, how's it different? Could be different in terms of physically, you might feel tighter, you might feel less balanced or something. Could well be, and we have the ability as people to notice our own mind, could be that you can tell, you know what, I just couldn't control myself, I aimed at the ball too much, I couldn't let it go. So here's how I would do the drill. Get set up there. So I'm in position to hit this ball, and I'm either going to go over the top of it with a couple of practice swings, or just to the inside, whatever your preference is. The idea, once you've had a couple, put the club down there and go, then you've got a nice close comparison. So I'm going to go a little bit over the top of it. Feels pretty fluid. I'm just going to set right up. I would say pretty similar there. I was pretty happy with that one. Balance not quite so good. Point being, it doesn't matter how I hit that one. This is your chance to compare a little bit. Do a little bit of self-coaching. Hey, this one, there's a lot of factors in hitting the ball a long way. Swing plane, grip, all those things. We just chose in this video, though, to give you some ideas about not getting in your own way and with a little less effort, creating some speed. So I hope that helps you with how to get that easy swing with effortless power. If you like the video, please subscribe to the channel here at YouTube. ScratchGolfAcademy.com is my home website. We have full courses in every aspect of the game there. Hope you'll consider checking that out. Thanks again.